My name is Douglas Rose Innes. I'm a consultant here for Tokamak Energy and my role is mainly thermodynamics, mechanical engineering. In order to get to 100 million degrees, we need a couple of things. We need high magnetic flux and we need strong plasma density. In order to do that, we need to put a lot of current, a lot of power through our magnetic coils. Now copper, unfortunately, gets hotter the more current you put through it, a bit like a light bulb. And it's a thing called IR square loss. You lose energy the more you put in. The hotter it gets, the more you lose, and eventually it will fail. By cooling the copper down to minus 177 degrees with liquid nitrogen, it allows us to put 250,000 amps into the co coil. More current in the copper allows you to make a much higher magnetic flux. The plasma responds to that magnetic flux and creates a higher plasma density and increases the temperature, hot enough for fusion energy. Three, two, one, fire. For the 15 million degree campaign, we used water to cool the coils. The reason why we used water is that we could very accurately measure the amount of temperature the coil produces, how much energy it wastes in heat. Now we're going up for 100 million, we need something a bit more serious and liquid nitrogen is what we've chosen to use. But in order to do that, we need to know just how much we need to cool it by. So the information we took from the 15 million campaign and it's now been transposed. And it's not just 15 million going to 100, yeah, well that's five, six times more. No, you can't do it that way. It actually, the hotter the coils get, the more heat they produce. So we need something serious, something with a lot of oomph, and liquid nitrogen is what will do it. It takes us four days to get the tons and tons of copper coil inside down to minus 177 degrees Celsius. And in all that time, all the copper coils around the inner vessel are in vacuum. And we have very large pumps sucking out the air continuously. We can't actually have any liquid nitrogen in the tokamak when we fire it, because liquid nitrogen has the ability to expand over 700 times its volume when it goes from a liquid to a gas. We don't actually control the flow of nitrogen by using any mechanical means. We actually control the flow of nit liquid nitrogen into SD40 by controlling the back pressure, the actual gas that comes off. What we do is we split the nitrogen up into 40 channels, then break out into about 160 channels. And they're very small pipes that run inside the copper coils. And we run the nitrogen through the center of the copper wire, which then allows us to cool only the parts we need. So this is where the liquid nitrogen actually comes into SC40 to cool the main components on the IVC and the coils. They're very special connectors because we run the risk of building up a ball of ice and ice unfortunately along with water is conductive and we can't have any conductivity of electrical conductivity between the liquid nitrogen system and ST40. So what we have is a liquid nitrogen line, a bayonet with an outer and an inner sleeve and a vacuum. So there's actually a vacuum, this is a large thermos flask and it fits in just like that, quick and easy. We can have the liquid nitrogen system attached or detached from SD40 in half an hour. This allows us to have quick turnarounds with maintenance, upgrades, or any repairs that we need to have. Because we feed the coils from the bottom, it allows the gas to escape out the top of the coil. We monitor the pressure and the temperatures coming out and as much as the coil is heating up, we can cool down pretty much instantaneously. What we have here is a manifold, and the way it works is very much like a thermos flask. So we have an outer tube, and then we have an inner tube on the inside here, and between the two tubes is a vacuum. Now this vacuum insulates the liquid from the outer tube. 
The outer tube is a very long tube and in order for any hot energy to get in it would have to go along this very thin tube and it's not capable of doing that. The thinner the metal the more efficient it is. This is called the bayonet and we use it on ST40 as an effective way of connecting pipes quickly, safely and making sure that there's no residual liquid left when we need to actually dismantle the system.